Welcome to Money Conversations with KJ. KJ is a lifelong entrepreneur who's made a lot of money, lost a lot of money, and found his way back again. If you're looking for a sterile how-to, you're in the wrong place. KJ and his guests will walk you through real-life situations told by the people who live them, and they are as messy as they are inspiring. Each episode will offer lessons learned, advice on how to replicate successes and avoid pitfalls, and a new perspective to power your financial literacy. Far from a one-size-fits-all, this podcast can help you build a roadmap to your personal promised land. Milk and honey for some, whiskey and steak for others, and remind you that you're not alone on this journey well hello hello everybody welcome back to the show um man i'm really excited to have my guest on here today um because i've known this guy for so long we were just talking a minute ago i mean it's 30 plus years i don't even know the exact number but it's been a while because my guest mr david lyon welcome to the show thank you thank you kj um yeah i don't know what do you think it is It's, it's it's i know it's 30 plus years easy Right? Yeah. I mean, my son is 30. So yeah. It would be well before yeah. Yeah. You didn't have him when I met you. We so that's cool. Around 30 so six. that's a while back. And the yeah. reason I bring this up is because, you know, I have, I have, you know, a lot of my guests that I know, right? But even though I've known you these 30 plus years, I don't know every detail about you because, no. you know, I, I maintain my friendships obviously a long time. Right. And, right. and so we don't see each other on a daily basis or weekly basis right. yet. Um, I have mad respect for you and I think Thank you've you. done amazing things and I, and, and I believe likewise. I know your stories to a certain extent and we're going to dig in a little deeper today and share with the people and see what we're going to do to be able to inspire them through your journey because, um, I know, your age is, I mean, you're just a year or so younger than me. I think so. Yeah. Right. And, um, you, you've done great things and, but I know like everybody else have the ups and downs. And so, sure. uh, I think it's going to be very relatable to the people out there. So let's get going. Okay. Well, you know, Dave, let me ask you this. It's this always my, my intro question to almost all my audience there. You know, we're, we're, I mean, out here teaching financial literacy, teaching people about money because money's the one thing that uh, people struggle with and has a domino effect in your life. And so the question is, as far back as you can remember, when did you start realizing what money was for? How that we trade money for stuff? How old do you think you were when, <laughs> when you realized that? Uh, I was a spender, man. I, um, I wasn't a big saver. So when I, when I had money, you know, I was living life. I always bought things. And Well, how old were you when you first made money? Did, did you can remember. Oh, I mean, we got to go back here. <clears throat> well, I, I worked with my father since I was 10 years old. So at 10 years old, work with dad, he gave you a few bucks to yep. do. Your dad was in, yep. in the auto body industry. Yep. And so he would pay you guys because you have brothers right. and, and pay you a few bucks. And so when yep. you when you made money, you're like, I want something. Yeah. I mean, whatever that was. At, at 10 years old, you probably want, and what would you want? You remember, uh, you know, you were, you're running around spending money. If you, if you had enough to then go to the mall or, you know, fast food or whatever, because you had your friends, right. You know, you, you know, you're spending the money, right. They loved hanging out with you because you always had it. <laughs> well, let me ask you, as I ask most people, and, and this is the number one question is like, how old were you when mom or dad sat you down and taught you about money? I don't believe that ever happened. Okay, so you're not alone in that boat. I can share right, with you. Right. That is the majority of people, right? right? right. And, and I think what happens is that because we never got sat down, right? Not just you. I mean, this is the majority of people out there, including myself. That when we're not sat down, when we when you're not taught something, mm-hmm. then you try to figure it out, right? That's whatever correct. it is in life. If we're not taught, right? Like when you go get a job and they say, "Hey, here's your job description. This is what I need you to do. X, Y, Z. And you sure. learn your job, right? Sure. But if mom and dad don't sit us down right. and say, Hey guys, like dad, when he finally said, when you guys were 10, around 10 years old and said, I want you to come work in the shop. I'm going to pay you dollar X, whatever it right, was. Right, right. He didn't go on and continue to say, well, here's what I want you to do with your money. Now, now you're going no. to earn money. No, he didn't. So how a minute ago you had mentioned I'm a spender, right? Yeah. Where do you think that came from? Why do you think you became a spender? You know, honestly, <laughs> kids in general will do what their parents do. I mean, we, they're just carbon copies of us. If, if we, when we get frustrated, if we go and start drinking, when they get older, they'll be drinking. If they, if they're more structured, the kids generally will be more structured. 
uh, dad was a spender, you know, we didn't, uh, it was funny because he had the coolest car, cars you could ever imagine. But yet we lived in these little apartments. Right. It was pretty funny. So there was no structure as far as, hey, save your money. And my brother, he saved money. He was the funny guy. He was the guy that he would save his money and he would go buy something really cool. And then, of course, we would use it, <laughs> you know, which was not cool. But, you know, when you're a kid, you just like, whatever. So, and obviously you can't speak 100% for your brother, but yeah. so you're a spender. You're <laughs> describing your brother as a saver. A we have mom more. and dad. Do you think yeah. mom was the saver? Do you think he got that from mom? Mm, no, nah, mom, mom didn't really work. I mean, she was more of in the house mostly, you know, right. growing up. Um, Which is know, very common, right? Yeah. Especially at our age, you know, our age right. when we grew up in the 70s, right? Yeah. It was, yeah, dad, breadwinner, yeah. mom taking care of the kids in the sure. house. You know, that was oh, yeah. normal. Yeah. Um, not so much today's world, but, you know, you, you bring up an, inter- an interesting fact that I talk about, which is we're carbon copies. We are. And we, because I, I, you know, one of the things I ask people is like, hey, how old should you start teaching kids about money? Oh, and, good Lord. Right yeah. now, before we get in that answer, I, I asked that question because if we don't teach kids, you just proved the fact or you right. stated the fact right. that we mimic. And I think we, we mimic do. as humans our whole lives. Right. It doesn't matter that we mimic our, our parents personalities and then we're a subchapter of them kind of thing. Yeah. But in life. Right. People want to emulate or imitate yeah. people. Yeah. Right. Um, and so consequently, so if your dad was the spender. Bing, bang, boom. Here comes Dave. Guess what? Oh, yeah. It's normal. Yeah. Dad makes money and spends money. I guess that's how you'd play the game. That's exactly is what right. you figured in your mind yeah. unconsciously. Like you didn't on purpose think that. No. No, right? No. You just thought, hey. I mean, what's our first thing? We, we don't want to be like our dad. We don't right. want to be, you know, we're, we're going to be rebels. But those things are in our psyche almost. It's like, this is what we see. This is all we know, you know. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, our parents split up when we were young age, so it was always around dad. Right. So, well, let me ask. So that was a 10 you're making money, and automatically you just was like, I make money, I go spend money, right? Yeah, you just, that's what I did. So at what age do you think where you realize, hmm, maybe spending is not what just we're supposed to do with this money? <sighs> maybe we're supposed to do something else. Well, I didn't really, I didn't really think about saving money like i taught my son to save money as i got older when i figured it out right but uh you know because you hear about if you put about put put money away every month by the time you're 65 you'll have a you know box of money right after compounds blah 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 we didn't teach that and we should have i didn't know it i had no clue i tried to tell my son you know save your money you know so you know you can buy your homes or whatever it is you're gonna have um I really didn't learn that till I was probably in my early thirties. I started thinking about money like, man, you know, it's so interesting. You say that Dave, because I, I, re, I teach that lesson. You and I haven't talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Right. And you are one of many of the people that have been on this podcast that tell me that exact thing, same thing. Mm-hmm. Like I'm right around my thirties and you re- start reflecting, yeah. right? Because you went through your twenties, a right. 10 year and right. a little bit late teenage years. So you're about you're spending money about 12, 15 years now. And by the, by the time we're all the age 30, we look back and reflect because at 30, you probably don't, most of us don't have no money. And we're like, right. I can't keep going this direction. Correct. Right. And you're like, I got to start what I got to start really taking money serious and what I'm going to actually do with it. So that's kind of what happened with you. Correct. No, I, it was exactly exactly what happened and uh when i started thinking on and those things i bought my first house and uh i started thinking i'm gonna start saving money because I, I would like to start buying and flipping homes and then i was in an accident so i was down for two years and you know everything is just flat now my wife's working she just had the baby uh it was it was it was a struggle it was a tough time in your life it was a real tough time and then when I did receive a sizable uh, settlement, I started buying homes, mm. you know, and flipping homes and renting homes. And it was lucrative. It was good. Yeah. It was a good time to do that. And I was starting to plan for my future. And I had already been with my my employer from 24 years old. That's what started kind of upsetting me. It's like, you know, six, seven years, I haven't put any money away. I'm not doing anything. It's time to start thinking about that. You know, again, um, 
there's, you know, I have listeners all over the world at this point and there's people out there. Let's say if there's somebody out there in that range, 28 to 32, and they're thinking about that right now. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're thinking to themselves, man, that's exactly what's going on with me right now. Sure. What, what kind of advice, good, solid advice. And not that you and I are financial advisors, right? right? I teach financial literacy. I want to teach people how to play the game, sure. recognize that there's a game being played and you're playing the game, whether you realize it or not, the you're minute right. you make dollar one, right. you're, you're in the system and you're making money. Right? right. And we're all turning money. But what well, is there some 30 year old out there right now who's thinking those thoughts right. that you had, what would you tell him or her? <laughs> You can't be too afraid to to invest. There's a lot of investments out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, you want to be careful how much and what you do. Make sure you invest in yourself that you're going to be in control of what you're doing. I would say if you're going to do an investment, be very involved. Don't just put your money with someone. Unless, of course, you know, it's it's a sure thing. But what's a sure thing? No, There's no, no magic thing. pills out there. Um, cause I've done that, you know, I've taken several thousand dollars and put it in a, in a business that, uh, the guy was very successful and it just bombed. And I just, and you know, I knew it was a risk, but I really didn't think it was a risk because the guy had a really good track record. So I would say, be careful how you invest, um, invest in yourself and be more in control of what you're doing with your money. That's really good advice, guys, that you're out there. And if you're in this, what, and really, this is whatever age. You could be 20, you could be 50. It doesn't matter. That's correct. Understand investing um, always has a risk at, at some level. And, sure. and what we want to do is minimize risk, right? When we invest, we just want to minimize risk. We mm-hmm. want an ROI. And there's a lot of people out there that are just great salespeople. And they'll sell you on something to lead you to believe, like, listen, bro, just 5,000 bucks is going to get you a return of a hundred and like 12 months. And you're like, and that yeah. old, that old phrase is if it's too good to sound to be true, it probably, probably is. is right. Correct. Um, that's really cool. What, um, do you remember how old you were when you got your first credit card? Yeah, I was, uh, I was, I believe 20 years old. 20. Yeah. And I, I had a, I had a Mervin's credit card. Oh, okay. So you got a store credit card, I got a store credit card. And then, well, I had my debit card too. So I felt like I was, a you know, I was, I was moving up a little. You were moving up a little. How did that affect your spending habits? Oh, considerably. I, I watched what was going in and what was coming out. I didn't bounce checks because i never bought anything that I didn't have money for. You know, I never, you know. So, so you didn't get yourself into any kind of debt that spun out of control or anything. Well, sure. I mean, when I, when I got silly, I mean, I was using my credit cards the wrong way for sure. Um, well, know. let's talk about that because, you know, most people have credit cards and I hear the term out there and I don't really like this term, but I hear it. It's out there. Credit cards are bad. You've heard that, right? Yeah. I don't think they're bad. So here, here's, here's my rebuttal to that, to that statement. Credit cards are bad. First of all, credit cards, are a piece of plastic. So how is it bad? Right mm-hmm. now, the way you use a credit card, there's people out there that yeah. use them very irresponsibly. Yeah. Those people, you could classify them as using credit cards badly. Right. right. Yeah. But the credit card itself is not bad. So, and people, so, but that phrase has been around so long that people have a fear of having credit cards. Now, if you follow someone like a Dave Ramsey, who a hundred percent is against credit cards. Right. Now yeah. I say, if you're responsible and you learn how to leverage, because in life we leverage all kinds of things. We leverage people, we leverage money, we leverage uh, time. We lever- We can leverage everything, right? Yeah. And a credit card is just a way to leverage. But, sure. And if you want to learn how to do it responsibly and correctly, it's a great tool. It, it is. David Ramsey is a, he, he's very old school when it comes to the way he does things. Um, I understand what he's saying right. because even when I was being responsible, then I did fall off track, you know, and I did have debt into my, <clears throat> excuse me, mid twenties. Uh, yeah. Credit cards can be rough. If you can't handle it, eh, maybe you should be afraid of them. Well, again, right. It's all about, um, I, I was watching this Jim Rohn video uh, yesterday um, about discipline, self discipline. And I think self-discipline comes in our lives on many different levels. Oh, sure. But for as far as credit cards, here's where you need that self-discipline. Like you get a credit card with a $2,500, you know, um, uh, balance that you can use. That doesn't mean someone just handed you $2,500 and go on a spending spree. That means like. You got to pay that back. You got to pay it back. And if you can't pay it back at the end of the month, don't spend it. 
Correct. Now, I understand in today's world, emergencies happen and you may go over that. But that's a, yeah. but now you're leveraging because you had an emergency. My transmission went out on my vehicle. It's two thousand bucks. I'm like, holy crap! I ain't got two grand. Right. But I need my car to go to work. Right. I better put on my credit card and hope I'm going to shoot to pay that thing off in the next sure. four or six months, whatever. Right. Right. There. The, to me, that's using it responsibly. Yeah. One thing I one thing I learned when I was younger. Um, I had a couple of mentors, people that I trusted, and unfortunately, it wasn't you know my dad because he wasn't big on the money structure, but. Uh, Someone told me, you know, you, you should have three months of rent in the bank saved in case something happens. I thought that was, that was pretty smart. You know, yeah, great and advice. The same thing. <clears throat> the same person said, uh, if you're going to have a credit card, be able to pay that whole credit card off in a month. Almost like a, <clears throat> uh, American Express. They want you, you know, if you right. can pay it off in the month. That's, that's really the way to go. In the real world, it's tough. You know, and you can get caught up. And, and I did get caught up, especially when I had the accident. I had put money aside into into a company that paid me $500 a month should something happen. I wasn't even thinking about it. I just said, all right, yeah, I'll do this. And then I got in the accident. I'm like, thank God I did that. Had I had I been really thinking about it, I would have put more into it because it was minimal. Right. Um, it, <laughs> Life, well, life it, it, so I want to I want to step back here because you said something a minute ago and I've had this conversation and and probably probably this is what I call a pivot point in, in your life that you had a couple of mentors. And I yeah. talk I share with people like if if mom and dad aren't teaching you whatever, that's not good or bad. It's just what is. And we don't yeah. you know, it, it's OK. It's right. OK. That, don't get mad at mom or dad for not teaching you something. And right. then you come across someone that's willing to be your mentor and teach you some things like you just described. He yeah. described for you to be what's called financially secure. Uh -huh. You need to have at least three months of your bills put away. Uh -huh. um, uh, last year, 2020 is a great example. COVID hit the oh whole planet oh, sure. and put people in financial situations, not by of their own fault. Right. Right. This was not by anybody's fault that, hey, everything shut down, can't go to work, can't make money. Right. And I know right now, statistically, 74 percent of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Absolutely. Now, for know. people like that, was that like, holy crap, what do I do? Exactly. How do I feed the family? Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, and, and a lot of people took advantage of it as well. They did. Well, people always will take advantage. But let's go back to this mentor thing. So you said you had a couple. How old were you when you think you got your first one? No, oh, probably 16, 17. How did that happen? Yeah, my dad was dating someone. Okay. We, we were talking. I've been on my own since I was 15 and a half, 16. So that was one of the conversations, you know, because she worried about me. She said, what are you going to, you know, and I was born with my hair on fire. So I was always moving. And right. I worked with you when I was a kid. Yep. We worked together. Um, I was always making money. I was never lazy. I, I have to make money. Um, I've never been one to reach for the brass ring. But at the same time, she was more worried, like, you know, you really need to do this because I know you're going to be doing this on your own. And I thought that was pretty smart. So I was about 15, 16 years old. That's really cool. Um, so there's someone who obviously cared about you yeah. to be able to, and, and probably at the time, do you, did you realize at the time that you were being mentored or did you just like, Hey, I know this person and they're just giving me some advice. Uh, I didn't even think mentor. I mean, I had mentors. My football coach was my mentor. My, uh, you know, she, she wasn't a mentor. She was just giving me some sound advice. Right. That I think she saw something in me that she was worried and she goes, Hey, you know, just, food for thought you know you want to do these things because you don't want to find yourself in a position and i i, I accepted it i wasn't one of those guys that was like eh, you know i don't, don't want to hear it see no. I, I love that you said that that you accepted it because i think people who care about other people want to give advice right in and to me a, a mentor someone that will be kind of ongoing right you're going to yeah. speak with this person for right. a period of time it could be one right. year it could be five years whatever it may be right i mean a one-off piece of advice even though that was great advice it was, was great, great advice. because uh you, you held heed to it right you took yeah. that advice yeah. right and i think yeah. for you guys listening Sometimes when people are trying to share something because they, they, you know, like you, love you and want to see you not go yeah. down a wrong direction. Right. We have to listen. Sure. We have to listen. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, even if you don't have a mentor, you know, by all means, ask questions, get some advice and weigh it out. You know, 
So you got to do a little research. But if you don't have a mentor, just just start asking questions. Start watching podcasts. Start checking out things and going, does that would that apply? Exactly, exactly. But it, it, I mean, you and I grew up in a different era. Um, today, it's much easier for people to... Um, jump on the internet and start surfing and, oh, and sure. finding out all kinds of information yep. versus you and I, mm-hmm. we literally, someone had to tell us whatever, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So your second mentor, which I hear a lot, which would be a sports you know, figure, like you're mm-hmm. playing sports when you're right, younger. Right. Um, my question is, because I, I want to make sure that people understand that mentors, most times you're asking somebody to be your mentor. Sometimes they'll just take the role, sure. but most times if you find yourself a little lost in life, so to speak, like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not quite getting it, this or that, whatever it may be. And you see someone who's super successful in whatever area that you want to go down right. and don't be afraid to ask. I say, don't be afraid to ask people, Hey, listen, can you mentor me? I want to get to where you're at. I don't know how you got there. Can you help me out? Mentor me for a little bit. Now, yeah. in most cases, like Dave, let me ask you this. If somebody asked you personally, just saw you, what you're doing, this and that. Hey, Dave, man, I really like where you're at. Would you mentor me for, you know, I don't know, a month, two months, six months? Yeah, help you the best I can. I absolutely right? would. Yeah, and, and my point is that most people will. Yeah. Right? So when you it's see kind of somebody. Honor, yeah. Yeah, when you see, because it's flattering. Sure. Well, it's, it's an honor. Real, yeah, it's yeah. an honor. It's flattering that you can help people, right? So for you guys out there. In thinking, well, maybe they don't want to mentor me. Maybe, maybe I'm imposing. Maybe I'm stepping out of line. What do you think? I, if they're point blank asked straight up, I mean, they should just not just be flattered, but yeah, be like, yeah, well, that's. Let me tell you what I know. Don't be afraid to tell this person some of the things you know. They're going to take it or not. But if they're asking you, by all means, right? You know, do it. And, and don't be afraid that there are going to be people out there to say, you know what? I'd love to. I don't have the time. Sure. Cool. Sure. It's cool. I'm yeah. not, I'm not hating on you for oh, no. to no. say no to me. Most people won't. Most people. Will I don't think so either. I, I think yeah. most people will yeah. give you yeah. some Ask level. Anything, you know, we'll get together or whatever. Sure. Exactly. And I think if, how do you think this world would be if more people mm-hmm. were like that? Oh my God. I mean, we're a fatherless nation in the first place. So people exactly. need mentors. Yes. And I don't mean to put women down with them. Women have some great advice. It was right. a woman who told me what to do, right. you know, what I should do. Um, but yeah, people are searching. They need help. That's why I'm here. That's why I do what I, I do this. now, right? This is I why this, this podcast, we, you right? Because again, you, we just learned earlier that, hey, listen, it was a woman when mm-hmm. you were around 15 that gave you your first, I would say, spark about really thinking about life. Right. It was. Right. It really was. Um, and, and we never know. It happened to you at 15. It could happen not till you're 20 or 30 even. Right. right? All these things are different timelines. Um, do you remember the first car you bought and how did you buy it? Because you were saying to me a minute ago that, hey, I'm a spender. Mm-hmm. But if, when you want, well, well, I call them big ticket items, things that you don't can't buy with just one single paycheck. Right. Right. Like, because you said you're a spender, not a saver. But when you bought your first car, how much was it? And, and how did you uh, manage to buy it? It was a Trans Am. I mean, it was 3000 bucks, Which back then was a lot of money. It was a lot of money, 3000 And I needed a co-signer. Oh. So my dad co-signed, which was really cool. You know, and the payments were, you know, what I thought were huge. were probably $130 a month. Right. But uh, I was very excited. And I had that. And I was... <clears throat> I did really well. And then when dad left, well, he took my car. <laughs> you know, he didn't believe that I was going to get a job, you know, to pay. And, you know, his name was on it. So right, that right. ended that. So that was my first car. Experience. That was your first car. Well, you know, for, for some of the people that are out there, my dad co-signed my first car. Um, I co-signed a car for my son. Mm-hmm. That didn't go well. And so my only advice when you want to co-sign for someone, whether it's family or friends, mm, Believe that you just bought that item. Absolutely. And hope, hopefully that person is responsible and takes care of it because, right. man, many a people of credit have been crashed because Absolutely. you trusted someone. And more importantly, they feel bad when they don't make that payment where it should be, listen, if you can't make the payment, you got to call me. Exactly. Because if you can, I have to. Yeah. Right. It's my, right. my credit's on the line. Absolutely. But people get embarrassed. Mm-hmm. That like, oh, crap, man, I can't make that payment. If I call Dave and tell him I can't make that payment, he's going to be riding my butt. Yes, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. I'd rather you say something. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I think um, it, I, I personally wouldn't do it again for anybody. 
Um, right. We all work way too hard uh, to maintain a good credit score, and, you yep. can, and it takes time to build them back up. I didn't do that with my son. Uh, my uh, his mother and I, we went in together and got him, bought him a vehicle, right? And it was ten thousand, so it was five thousand each, and he had a nice truck. He didn't appreciate it, you know, beat the crap out of it. But I think if I had to do it over again, I would have him working and doing even even his uh, chores and things like that. Just put money away, put money away, put money away because I'm not buying you a car. This is going to be for you to pick whatever and do whatever you're going to do. I'll take care of your college. I'll take care of your food. I'm buying your clothes. But you're going to buy your car. I should have done that. But, you know, you learn things as you get older and you're like, I kind of screwed that one up because he didn't appreciate it. Uh, I think you're right. And I know there's parents listening out there um, and there's different degrees of that. Um, I know people, you, you and I both know people who go out there and buy their kids very expensive automobiles. And th- what they're doing is they think they're doing the right thing and their kids, maybe because they deserve it or they earned it, whatever their reasons are. But at the end of the day, you're doing a big disservice. You are. Because you're not teaching your kid the number one thing that we all need to be in life, which is responsible right. for everything that we do. Right. And when something, a high ticket item comes into into your life by nothing that you did, mm-hmm. um, like you said, your son didn't respect that truck and beat it up. Yeah, he loved having it. His friends loved it. But he, yeah, he just, he beat it up. And then, and then of course, I had to fix it. Right, right. So that when I started teaching him that and then he blew the motor on it, I said, well, here, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you the truck I have now but you're going to pay me for it. I'm going to take this truck back. And then I put a new motor and everything. And then he wanted it back. I'm like, no, no, you can't have it back now. You have this one now. This is not a beater, but it's a beater compared to this one. Right. Cause this one's got a new motor, but and he had to pay me and he had to learn it. Like, Man, that's that's playing hardball. Those you're are, you're finding well, out that this world's not giving you anything. Exactly. You're going to work for it. I love that phrase. This world's not giving you anything. The world is ours. What is that? What is that? That line in um, Scarface? Oh, yeah. The world is my oyster. Is that no? The world. The world is mine. Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, the world is mine. And it's out there for all of us, right? We just got to go out there and, get, and get after it sure, um, sure. to get it. And you've done that your whole life. And yeah. you know, the, it's funny. I remember your dad. Your dad was a little more on the strict level, wasn't he? He was strict. I think because we were just a pain in the butt for him. But, yeah, he was strict, uh, you know, a certain style of living. And you're going to be a certain way and you're going to treat girls a certain way. Meanwhile, he was the opposite of everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, not to put him down. He just he didn't have any any guidance either growing up, but he did the best he could. Yeah. You know, um, I think we all we want more for our children than we have either oh, had yeah. or done. Right. We want our kids to excel better than than what we, we do. did. We do. And then I think a, I think a common problem is, uh, here's a good example. Uh, I'm into sports memorabilia. And my son, he has everything. I mean, he when it comes to, you know, helmets signed by the team and things that, uh, you know, pretty, pretty big value, he doesn't care about any of it. Mm. See, I grew up with nothing. So when I get these things, I'm excited. I have this or I have that. I have spoiled him so much growing up that, like Joe, what do you want to do with all this stuff? And he's like, hey, just keep it, Dad. I don't, I don't want to. Because we had everything growing up, and right. it's like I spoiled him so much that he doesn't even know the value. You know, just Christmas he came by and he's looking at the wall and he's like, "What are those worth?" I'm like, "I don't know. They're yours. What are you gonna do with them?" You know. He, <laughs> so he starts looking online. He goes, "Holy mackerel, those are expensive." I'm like, "Hello." Yeah. Yeah. Joe, you know this. You know this is a big deal. So now he's starting to, and he's just turned thirty. So now he's starting to think. Hmm. Well, let me ask you. So we talked about, and again, the majority of people, mom and dad didn't sit you down and teach you about money. Did you, did you have a, a significant, you can remember conversation with your son at what age about money and what, how to handle it, what to do with it? You know, he was, he, we had one child and, uh, that's where I screwed up. I mean, I, I did spoil him. I was strict. I was really strict. And when there was came, came time to make money, he wasn't very motivated. He knew he didn't have to be. I mean, like one of the worst things you can hear somebody go, you know, oh my, my kids think I'm an ATM. I heard a, what's right. his name say this on the on one of his shows. And that that's kind of sickening because, but I kind of was that guy. You were him. Yeah. And you were ATM like, dad. Yeah. It's like, you're pathetic. 
I should have never done that. You want something? Let's work for it. And I didn't do that with Joe. And it wasn't until he started his own family. He's like, man, I, I got to work. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'll help you. I'll you still know, send you to school. You want to go to another school? I'll, I'll help you that way. Right. But I'm not paying your mortgage. Yeah. So, <laughs> again, the to me generationally this has happened right for generations mom and dad don't sit down most i'm not saying all because i I believe the the wealthy do it a different way they they send you to school Mm -hmm. to learn about money because you're going to take over this this wealthy family's business or however wealthy dad made his you know multi-millions or whatever right Right. they're going to make sure you learn how to do that they're not going to hand it to you on a silver platter and if we hear the stories of people like a warren buffett worth billions of dollars and he flat out says i'm no my kids get one million that's it like that's like a ten dollar bill for most of us for him right that's like right. that's it you know he had to learn how to figure it out and go out and do it you got to figure it out. i'm gonna give you a little boost right but you got to go out there i'm not just going to hand it to you that's that's interesting i mean when you when you when people hear that they're like a million bucks <laughs> right and <laughs> a million, million dollars million. even today is a lot of money but it goes quick if you don't do it right quick really gone. quick oh yeah my money went quick it goes way faster so. than than any of us re- realize um yeah a million dollars is a lot of money but first the the first slice goes to uncle sam and he's taking 40 percent minimum yep. uh so all of a sudden you're dan i mean uh shaquille o'neal has a great story on that have you ever heard his story uh his first bits, million? Bits and pieces, no. So when he signed, right, as a kid, basically, into the NBA, his signing bonus check was a million dollars. And he went out and bought himself a brand new Mercedes. <laughs> and then he came home, and his dad said, but that's an awesome, beautiful car. He, yeah. said, well, he said, Dad said, where's mine? And Shaq goes, oh, crap, I'll be right back. And he goes back down to the store, right, and he buys his dad one. Just throwing Dad's all happy, away. right? So then they both come home. Guess what mom said? Where's mine? Where's mine? <laughs> and Shaq was like, damn, you're right. I got to buy mom and dad their car. Sure. And he goes back down. He says, he says, the story goes, he says, the next day or within a week, his uh, his manager calls him up and he says, so um, I don't know what you've done, but you have no money. He's like, what do you mean? I got no money. I just got a million dollars. He's like, yeah, no, 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 no. You forgot. Uncle Sam gets paid first. Mm-hmm. You went down about three cars and you bought a bunch of whatever. Yeah. He goes, you're, you're right now negative. Yeah. And he, wow. and he thought, and for him, that was a big wake up call. Yeah. He didn't like, know. what are you talking about? I went through a million dollars that fast. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, now that's extreme, obviously, sure. but you could just move the decimal down. Oh yeah. A couple of notches and dad's making a thousand a week and that goes fast. It goes fast. You got to pay the mortgage or the rent and the food and the gas and the insurance. Blah, 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 boom. Yeah. You're like, Hey, we got $12 till next week. You've been, been there, right? Been there. Been there, done that. Been been less than 12. Right? Yeah. And, and listen, and many people have. So let me ask you, are, have, are you or have you been a goal setter in your life? Do you set goals on a regular basis? Not on a regular, but yeah, I've set goals. I've set most throughout my life. I mean, that was a big deal. I think I got that one from my coach. But uh, set goals and not just set the goals, but write down how you're going to achieve them. Ooh, you know, I love that. I love that. I love yeah, that so much. Because you can set goals all day long. How are you going to do it? What are you going to do? What's your time frame? What's your action plan? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you got to give yourself a little allowance and, you know, but it has to be structured and, and it has to be attainable. Can't be something crazy. And just stick to it and do it. If it's something you're passionate about, it should be in a no problem. But if it's not, you're like, "Ah, I don't know, I don't know, maybe, maybe don't do that. But by all means, set goals. Set goals. And the most important thing you, you said about setting goals, which is vital, and I'll give you a quick stat on it, is write them down. You got to write them down. Because if you don't write a goal down, it's not a goal. It's a no. dream. Yeah, it's uh, it's a dream. But a dream should be turned into well, a goal. A dream, again, there's 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 a sequence, right? Yeah. Things start out as a dream. That's exactly right? right. And then you're like, okay, that's not a dream anymore. I want to make it an actual goal. Right. And then we need to write them down. Well, Harvard did a study about this back in 79. Really? And they found, uh, they did the 79 graduating class, how many of their students had goals wrote their and, and or wrote their goals down. And they checked back with them 10 years later. And only 3% of the class had actually said, yeah, no, I have goals and I wrote them down already. And the rest of the class, they didn't. Kept it a dream. 10 years later, do you know that that 3% earned 10 times more money than the other 97% of the Without kids? Without question. 
because that's how important it is to write them down. Yeah. And then, like you said, then after that, there's not just write them down, but now you actually have a plan, an action yeah. plan. How do I reverse exactly. engineer how to get this goal? Exactly. And you can make, because you can make anything happen right. if you have a plan. If you don't write it down. I mean, out of sight, out of mind for everything, just about, especially a goal or a dream. So since you shared with me the normal timeline right around your 30s where you're like, I got to start, start start taking money more seriously. How old were you when you started thinking about retirement? Like, man, I can't work forever. Oh, I was already I was already thinking about it. I actually right now, the company I work at now, I could have retired two years ago. I'm just not ready. I mean, yeah, well, I, I can double dip. I can go do something else. And I'm, I'm considering. Some let me, let me rephrase that because. <clears throat> Again, yeah, we're at the age where we're retirement in your ages. Um, what does retirement mean to you? It's <laughs> like, like, cause you, you put in enough time at a place that they'll retire you, meaning you're going to get a pension, right? Yep. You're, you're going to get something, but what does retirement actually mean to you? Because I teach this in a class and the word retirement, I think has been programmed to us in a certain way. So what, when you, when someone says to you, Hey, you're like, like five years ago, they, Hey, you're getting close to retirement. Like, what does that even mean? Well, for me, it was never, uh, I'm not the guy that sits on the couch. So for me to retire and, and go fishing and you know, I know that sounds great and everything, but I'm, I'll get bored too fast. I got, I got to stay mobile. I got to stay moving and I don't want to get old and die. I mean, you hear that story way too many times. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when I retire, I'm still going to be, I'm just going to jump into something else. I'm going to be making more money. I want to be, I just want to keep moving. I want to be active. And uh, so it sounds like it's not about the money for me. Yeah, for me, it's about staying busy because the money is already there. I'll be fine. I mean, I pay all my bills, got everything going. But I just want to, I want to be able to stay busy. What if I want that boat and I have this nest egg here? I can't buy that boat. You know, I, I got to, I got to keep going. I got to do other things. As long as I can walk, God's given me that strength. I'm going to go. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep working. Yeah. You're young and you're still healthy. You can so dig it out there. Like you said, that's I, why I'm still there. I mean, people are asking me, why are you still here? I'm like, you know, uh, well, yeah, I, I can't find another place that I want to hang out yeah, on a regular basis. Yeah. I mean, I, I do other things, you know, and, uh, you know, I still make money on the side besides my, my, uh, my job, but, uh, I want to find something I'm passionate about. I just haven't found. I got a couple of things in the fire, but eh. nothing yet. Not it's funny because so retirement, I teach this because I, I believe people need to understand what it even means. Right. But I think we're so programmed to go to school, get good grades, get a job, work 40 years, save your money and then retire. But wait a minute, that does, that program doesn't work for everybody. Right. No, it does and, not. And, and, on many different levels. Now, some people are, will go out there and be excited. Hey, I'm retired. And like, all you're, all you're telling me is like, you're not trying, you're telling me you're not trading time for money anymore because that's what, that's what most people do. They trade time right. for money, right? right you've right. been, you've been at your job, what, over 30 years? 32. 32. So you traded time for money for 32 years for this mm -hmm. company, right? Mm -hmm. um, entrepreneurs don't trade time for money. Nope. They trade value for money. Right. Right. Um, and so when I talk about retirement, I'm like, it's the wrong goal to shoot for when you're 20 or 30 or whatever age, like, man, mm -hmm. I, I want to retire at age, whatever. Right. Sure. I think, and I teach that there's three things that we just strive for in life financially. And I think and we will take that word retirement right out of the equation. The first one is to be financially secure, sure. which you described earlier that a mentor taught you, Hey, sure. put away at least three months of your rent, right. Right? right? Sound, sound advice. So the, the definition of being financially secure is having six months, months of your monthly bills. Oh, now yeah. that number is different that's for everybody. A, that's a great number. That's a good move. Right. Yeah. Because, and, and last year was again, such a great example of people who got laid off, right? Mm -hmm. Just oh, not boy. by their fault. Wasn't right. their fault. Right. 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 This whole thing happened to the, the whole planet. So once you get yourself in that position and you've been there, how much better did you feel sleep at oh. night? <laughs> like, I'm not worried about the power bill. I'm not. Or none of those things, right? You just it's, can live your life on such a different level. Yeah, I've been doing that for twenty plus. Right. I don't I don't worry about things like that. I don't it's done. But you know people do every day. And and I understand that, but you have to they have to understand too. I'm I'm still working, you know, and I have what I have because I'm working. I'm not, you know, now if something were to happen to me, I I could not be at work and still have that money because I have the longevity and I've got all that. I'm trying not to get to that. I want to keep going. Right. 
So that's the first pillar we all should strive for. Now, it's not easy to get there. I'm going to tell for most people out there, they're thinking, ah, oh, Cav, man, you, that's easy to say. But and I give an example in my training of three thousand bucks a month. Right. That means you need eighteen thousand dollars set aside in a bank in an account that's accessible immediately because that's what emergencies are. You need that's that money exactly right, right now. Right. Not oh, it's going to take a process to get it. Um, I agree. Eighteen thousand dollars is a chunk of money and it may take people. It could take you six months, six years, put it whatever it is, slowly get there. Because, as you just said, you, you're like you're going to live your life on a whole different level. Right. Comfortable. The stress is gone. So far, so good. So far, so good. So the second tier that we need to strive for is financial independence, which means where you're at when my money makes enough money to support my lifestyle right which that's what your pension does mm-hmm. your pension will support your lifestyle then you're officially financially independent like i don't okay. have to go trade time for money no more not if I anymore don't want, if i don't want to right that, that was my goal now if then, i want to great if i don't good now the next and, and it's not easy to get to that position See, because it, there's not many people not, not many places out there giving pensions anymore it's like i didn't know that I'm well, not. of course, yeah, okay. I mean, you've been in the school district, so yeah. the school di- districts do it. Um, not all government jobs, but most of them, right, if you want to work for the government. But sure. anyway, uh, the next pillar to be that you want to strive for is to have what's called financial freedom, and we've heard that term. And you described it unknowingly a minute ago. You want me to tell you how you did it? Good. So you said, well, Kev, I don't have to trade time for money. I My pension can cover everything, but what if I want that boat? Exactly. Right? And to have financial freedom means... Yes. I'm past the financial independence days. I have enough money to go buy the boat right. to take my family on a three week vacation to Europe if I want. And I don't and, have that. And in that <laughs> amount of money that it takes right. doesn't affect me. Right. Like I no problem. You. Let's let's go. Let's do it. Right. Right. And very few people can reach that pinnacle, although it is very achievable. It sure. It when is. you learn how to play this game correctly and invest. Because yeah. you got through retirement because you got a pension. Right. Most people have to get to retirement by investing. Right. Because generally speaking, if there's no pension and you have to trade time for money and you don't invest your money, and next thing you know, and how fast hey Dave, how fast did it, did fifty come? Like Oh boy. Like forget about it. Like yeah. it seemed like five years. Really fast. It's it's I, I'll be sixty this year. Right. So, I mean yeah. I just turned sixty and wow. and it's crazy, right? Because I know I was talking to somebody about this the other day. All right, technically, yes, I'm 60 years old, but when I look out into the world, my mind is still of a 22 or 25 year old. I feel you. Right? Yeah. So forget the age thing. Yeah. And now the number one asset we have in our lives is time. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We're in the fourth quarter now, bro. Oh, no doubt. We're in the fourth quarter of life. So understanding compounding, it works. It's not in our favor. No. Because it works on time. Right. Right. I don't want to wait till I'm 90 before I can appreciate whatever. No, 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 no. no. But honestly, I I mean, I work every day, but I still appreciate even my days off and my vacation time. I appreciate everything I do. I have a great time. My grandkids, I spend time with them. And it's uh, like if I were to die tomorrow, I'm cool. I'm all right. I'm happy. But yeah, I want that financial independence. I want to be able to, you know, throw everybody on a plane, go to Hawaii. Right. I, I don't have that. Right. So, yeah, that's that's definitely something I want to achieve. That could be a goal. Oh, it's a goal. It's a goal. And then you just reverse engineer. How am I going to get there? What's it going to take? And I already know it's going to. Yeah. Like right. like I, I used to teach people. I teach people this for years. And I I'm like they'll have like I like where do you want to do? I want to go to Italy. I'm like, awesome. How long do you want to go for? Man, two weeks in Italy would be great. I go, OK, well, have you broke it down? I'm like, well, what do you mean? That's that's what I want to do. I'm like, well, right now it's a dream, mm-hmm. but it's not a goal. And I go, so if you told me, oh, yeah, Kev, I already figured out. I know the airfare. I know the hotel I'm staying there at. You go. I know what I'm going to do for the two, two weeks that I'm there. <laughs> and it's going to cost me, you know, $22,478. Yep. Like, excellent. You've done your homework now. Now your job is to, how long is it going to take me to put away $22,478? My nephew did that. Right? He did it. He went to Italy. And that's, but that's the way we should all do it. Right? right. You want something in life. What's it going to do? What's it going to take to get there? Exactly. Now, now, we have another brother, and his son had a had a had a a, a, a settlement, and he wanted to put ten thousand here, ten thousand here, ten thousand here. And his dad, my brother, said, "Why don't you, why don't you put five thousand here, five thousand here, and another five thousand? Take that Italy trip you've been wanting to do, and then invest these two to do this here." And he thought, "That's a great idea," and he did it. And he spent the two weeks, three weeks in Italy, and he came back and he's doing well. You know, he's doing okay. Right. So, 
Um, good advice. I it, thought. it can be good. Listen, we're on this planet for a certain amount of time. We want to enjoy ourselves for sure. It's not all about um, work, which is another word I don't like um, because work has a negative condensation to it. Right. Yeah, I enjoy um, what I do, so I don't really call it work, but it's a job. It's my job. Yeah. Right. But I enjoy what I do. If you enjoy what you, I always enjoy, you know, I, I've controlled my time for over 30 years now. Never work so. a day in your life if you love what you do. Exactly. Or just, you know, enjoy life. Enjoy life. I, I agree that we should do that. Um, if that settlement got me 50% of a bigger goal, mm -hmm. I probably would have stayed home and said, what? I'm, I'm going to let that money grow a little more and I'm going to wait another year or two. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's your but mindset, that, which is great, but. He didn't know that. He wasn't thinking that. Well, he's not so that's thinking why I like that. the show because you can get all kinds of different insights. We get know? different insights. So let me ask you, we've been talking about you. You have your son. Your son's how old now? 30. Do you think you might go have a deeper conversation with him now? I think so. Right? Yeah. And, and, and so my final question here is I like to ask everybody. You're, you're almost 60. And if you could look back, because, you know, hindsight 2020, right? What would you tell... Or give your 21-year-old self advice. What would you tell your, you, you, like you, we could time travel and like we see movies right, do right, this, right. right? What would you tell 21-year-old Dave? Realistically, uh, because of who I was my whole life. And um, the one thing I could tell myself that I would have actually done would be put a hundred away every month if you can. A hundred a month and just like you, it's not there. Forget about it. And, and I mean, forget it. And don't freaking touch it. Don't touch it. And that's, that's the one thing because I mean, I could say a lot of other things too. Hey, you know, and invest in yourself and follow your dreams and blah, blah, blah. But honestly, the guy that I was, I was very scrabble. I was, uh, I couldn't focus on one thing. I was always moving. I was in trouble a lot because I was, you know, just a wild kid. Uh, not trouble like the law, but I was, for me, that would have been the only thing that made sense for me. Put money away because look at, here's the goal. Here's the package when you're done. And you can do that. You can do that. I mean, but if I, if I gave myself anything else, I probably wouldn't have done it. So it, it, at the time, if you think back, was a, would a hundred dollars when you were 21, was that like, would have been a real stretch to save or like no, no big deal? No, it would have been a big deal, but not that big of a deal. I okay. mean, because I was making money. I was, uh, I was in body shops. I was, so you, you would, you would tell yourself the advice is like, Hey, listen, it's a little bit of a stretch for you yeah. right now at 21. But I can right? do that. I can do about $25 right. a week. I right. can do that. You could do that. That's all that is, is 25 That's a week. That's all it is. I mean, we all screw off 25 yeah. a week. So, um, but it was a mindset about doing it. So that's right. great advice. Well, at 65, you're looking at what a, a million seven, right? Yeah. And if you start it. At 25, it's a million seven. You start at 35, you cut yourself out $750,000. Start yeah. early. Start early. As early as you can. That's why time is our most valuable time, asset, right? Yeah, and our enemy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, shoot, Dave. All right. That was awesome. I think some good, really good feedback here is, look, Dave and I are regular folks growing up yeah. here in Vegas and... Um, we all, I think, around the world have the same thoughts. I have friends that live in Europe and stuff, and we're all the same. It doesn't matter where you're at on this planet. So thanks for coming out, sharing your story, My helping pleasure. the people. I know that people out there are parallel stories. You yeah, know they're yeah, out there. Yeah. So save that 100 bucks a month, guys. Yeah, save guys. that 100 bucks yeah. a month. And if you got kids, sit down. Talk yeah, to them. Absolutely. Because what you'll do is save time. You're going to save them time to don't oh, wait till they're 30 to figure you're it out. You're helping them. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, uh, listen, thanks for coming out. Thank you for if having me. If you believe we gave value and insight to um, all the people out there, please subscribe to my podcast. And uh, this will also be on YouTube. So subscribe to my YouTube channel and also smash the like button when you watch it. So these get released every Wednesday uh, at 7 a.m. So we'll hear Dave's in a few weeks. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you on the next one. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that episode. I uh, really enjoyed making all these episodes for you. Remember, we're just having uh, conversations with people's journey with money and the things they did right with it, the things they did wrong with it, and uh, how, how did they really come about getting their mindset with money. So uh, every episode's different. We all have a good takeaway from them. So do me a favor, hit the like button, smash the like button, and subscribe to my channel because every episode that I do is going to be different as all our journeys are different. So you guys take care and uh, we'll talk to you next week.